Hey, so today we're going to be taking a look at what soldiers do at each enlisted rank. As always, the links to the original video and channel are going to be down in the description below, so go ahead and make sure that you check them out. If you're new to this channel, a little background on me. I was a former corporal in the United States Marine Corps, where I was in 0311 and went on two deployments. First one, primarily staying in Kuwait at Jabber, not really doing too much. And then the second one, going back to Kuwait in Jabber, and then also spending about half the time's worth in Syria. And then we did a, a mission as well. So this video popped in my feed a couple days ago and I decided I, I wanted to check it out and kind of try to relate some things as far as like the Marine Corps side of things. If what ha have been as far as my experience or the experience of seeing others go through it or cer certain things, right? That what can translate or to other branches as well or all the branches kind of have the same thing, right? With, you know, their own little differences here and there. And before we get into the actual video, don't forget to like, subscribe, it really does help me a lot. Hit that notification button so you get notified every time I do upload. And without wasting too much more time, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So, what does this guy do? Or maybe, what does this guy do? Or even, what does this guy do? Well, that's what we'll be explaining in this video. What's up, my friends? Welcome to a brand new video. In this one, I'm explaining kind of what soldiers do at different levels of enlisted rank. All right, so we're going to be talking about some different enlisted ranks. I have a few demonstration ones here. If I don't have a demonstration one, they're probably be like a little pop-up somewhere is of showing what the rank looks like and I'll explain it to you a little bit but by enlisted he means for those that don't know um he's not going to be talking about the officer side of things right and also I just realized that before each rank because he does have a broken hair in chapters I'll kind of give a, like a little bit of a uh I guess my personal experience up until corporal uh, and then from besides that sergeant and above I'm just going to be kind of going as based off of what I saw of other people who are in that enlisted rank you're probably curious as to like, what do you do as a private? What do you do as a sergeant? What do you do as this rank, right? Only on the enlisted side, that's what we're gonna do. But without further ado, let's dive into it. And we're starting off with blank slate, all right? If you're an E1, you don't have any rank on your chest, on your uniform. It's just an empty Velcro or hook and fastener. It's in it, it's Velcro, all right? It's Velcro. You don't have any rank on your chest, anywhere. You're just a private. Well, those individuals, we should probably still bundle in with the E2s that actually does have something on their chest, little mosquito wings, your little kind of a chevron thing. I don't know. It's a, technically a private second class, but nobody calls it a private second class. They still get called privates. Basically, your E1s and E2s, for the most part, get treated practically the same. You know what? That's pretty damn spot on, right? As far as the E1 and E2, you know, private, private first class, even in the Marine Corps side of things, um, you're only really a knee one, at least from what I saw, up until like maybe mid SOI, right? So after you get out of boot camp and halfway through SOI, around the split, right, where that happens, where pretty much everybody's gonna pick up E2. Now, if you went to boot camp and was actually able to get someone else to join you, or as far as like, get someone else recruited, you're gonna be bumped up to an E2 in boot camp, right? As far as I remember, we only had one person in the company get that E3 rank i believe but i'm not too sure it's been a while but yeah for the most part you're still by the time you get to the fleet you're going to be an e2 uh, some people you might have a couple e3s here but for the most part e2s are probably going to be um, the most and during that time you're pretty much just going to be getting told what to do how to do it when to do it and I think I've only ever heard of one person. I didn't quite know him very well, but I heard some guy who had gone to the fleet as an E1. I think he got in trouble in a SOI. And yeah, so, but I mean, it's very rare you see an E1 in the fleet unless maybe you got NGP, got demoted, things like that. These soldiers are stuck doing whatever, all right? If there is some crappy detail, if there is missions that need to be done, these soldiers are stuck doing it. Working party. You basically have to earn your keep, right? You're brand new in the army. You have no experience. So you have to build that experience. The only way you're going to build experience is by doing things and doing the crappy details, doing the good details, whatever the case is, that's how you build experience. So those E1s and E2s, you just kind of get stuck with the crappy end of the stick. You get stuck with all the crappy details, all the work. Anytime they need someone to go do something, they're probably looking to the lower enlisted guys for sure. If they need more than that, I'm going to probably grab more, but sometimes they alternate too with other other. What's that one phrase? Lift with your PFCs? Ranks as well. So, you know, but definitely expect that you're going to have to do a lot of crappy stuff for a while until you kind of build up in rank. Now, when you build up to an E3 or a private first class, which I don't have one of those, so it's on the screen, but 
that does get a little bit better. You may not notice it, but it does get a little bit better. Uh, but for the Marine Corps, you threw would be a Lance Corporal, Lance Coolio. And pretty much by the time you become a Lance, you're somewhat already a senior, technically considered one. I mean, nowadays it's just after you go on a deployment. It doesn't really matter where your deployment is. It doesn't matter if you've seen combat or whatever. You know, people consider you a senior at that point, right? Just because you've been on one deployment. And then throughout the years going back, um, I remember hearing that you would only be considered somewhat of a senior if you had been in combat or if you had deployed and didn't see combat. You wouldn't be treated like crap, but you wouldn't be treated on the same rank as those who did see combat. And then from what I did hear and from what it seemed like it was happening was that every time it was going down, it was kind of being less and less and to the point it was just like all you have to do is go on a deployment that's it and i don't know for me lance corporal just seems cooler than private first class for e3 you're probably not the first choice for them to go and send off to a crappy detail unless you happen to be just a crappy soldier because sometimes it doesn't matter what your rank is if you're someone that just messes things up all the time well the ncos want to make sure that you kind of learn from that and try to get better so you are still going to stuck with all the crappy details but if you are proving yourself, you're working hard, and you're doing the best that you possibly can, then they might try to, you know, give more of the crappy details to those still privates and everything like that. And the private first class, the E3, may be able to slide out of a few of those. But you still don't have a whole lot of authority. You don't have a whole lot of responsibilities as a private first class. It's a little bit better than a private, like an E1, E2, but not a whole lot more. It does actually get a little bit better when you get to this guy. When you move up to an E4 or a specialist, Okay, A4 Mafia. Granted, before he goes into it, for me, I was in, I was only here for like, what, two weeks-ish, right? I got promoted at the very end of my contract. And it was just kind of like, and they threw it at me, practically. And for the most part, when he was talking about like, hey, you're going to be put into certain uh, um, details that are going to be having to do working parties, which is primarily what it's going to be. Um, and there are chances that um, a lot of times, say if you're a GP, right, or you're still technically considered a senior, but you just don't have a, a leadership position because you've got people who went to um, AIC, you got people who went to team leaders course, right? You know, things who, people who are actually in the leadership position, right? So you're kind of more interchangeable, right? It also can be dependent on whether or not a squad leader or even a, a platoon sergeant likes you. If they hate you, they're going to put you on shitty jobs regardless, right? Which is kind of where the whole social, you know, connections really can help you out, but it's kind of a bad way to look at it in the Marine Corps. I mean, because a lot of people do get screwed screwed over in those instances, especially if you're not very well liked. And it could be just due to the fact that somebody has a favorite and you and that favorite don't get along necessarily very well. So now you're kind of screwed. It happened to a buddy of mine, and I'm not going to name his name, but he got screwed over pretty hard. It does actually start to get a little bit better. Now you get a little bit more responsibility. Now you're probably the babysitter for the privates, sure. But you actually have a little bit more responsibility now. You might be more of the go-to individual to do the more important missions, the ones that they really need someone reliable. If you were someone really reliable as a private too, you could have ended up in that situation. But hopefully at this point, you know, your specialist individuals are the ones that are kind of the more reliable individuals and the ones that they're going to count on to get things done. In the Marine Corps though, I mean, you, you can be really good um, as in if you're an E2 for example, yeah, let's go ahead and say you too. You could be very good at what you're doing. You know what you're doing. You know how to lead people, right? Your peers listen to you. You could be really good, but if someone doesn't like you who's above you, specifically talking about a senior, and they and they end up getting told um, by the uh, platoon sergeant, or platoon commander, like, hey, what do you think about so and so, right? You know, I was thinking about maybe giving them a little more responsibility. Or in my instance, they actually thought about promoting one, and I was overhearing, and then they completely blocked this dude say that he's inexperienced he doesn't know what he's doing i'm like at this point both you guys have about as much experience as the other does only one of you has more time in right both never saw combat things like that i'm gonna stop there before i go off on a rant but a lot of times a senior could definitely mess up your opportunities some examples of that is let's say like in my mos right as an ada mike the specialists that actually have proven themselves and everything like that i may trust them a little bit more to kind of look after the privates again kind of going back to the babysitter thing i guess 
but we might look up to them a little bit better to, you know, making sure that, you know, things get accomplished, right? So I might give the taskings out to those specialists or someone who's a higher ranking specialist to say, hey, these are the things we got to get done. Uh, can you see to it that, you know, things are, are happening and, you know, have so-and-so help you get so-and-so to do this, so-and-so to do that. So you have a little bit more authority. Probably often you're not doing as much of the crappy details. You might still have it. And definitely if you're a messed up, jacked up E4 specialist that is not very reliable, then you might get stuck with a lot of the crappy details. But if you are reliable and pretty good, then it might be limited. You might get none. You might only get a few here and there. It might just kind of vary on the leadership in the unit. So, or if you're a favorite, like I know some people were, you can get away with a lot of things. Things do kind of get better here. I mean, people have the E4 Mafia, the Sham Shield, right? A lot of times because the privates are getting stuck with all the crappy things and the specialists aren't having to do all those crappy things. So like, oh man, specialist so-and-so gets a sham out of this one. Well, they've built their way up to their rank a little bit. So yeah, they kind of earned it a little bit. Now we should probably... I don't know about the Army, but in the Marine Corps, yeah, that could be. I mean, some people, it's very competitive, damn, in the infantry to go up to a corporal. Um, some people really do deserve it. Some people really do earn it based on merit and just the fact that they're really good at their job and they know how to lead people, which is a good combination. Some people just get it because, again, favoritism, it's, it's a thing. And a lot of people get it, you know, despite whether or not they deserve it or not. I mentioned E4 Corporal, all right? For the most part, it's only a little bit more authority than the specialist in a lot of cases, not always, but in some cases, sure, they kind of are like this in-between of a specialist and a sergeant. Sometimes they task them with tasks that normally would be done by a sergeant. Sometimes they might task them with things that would be done by a specialist. They're kind of almost like both ranks. They're almost like a sergeant and a specialist in some ways, and they feel like, hey, we can just give this guy you know, both of these jobs. They might be things like, you know, they're like, hey, that soldier is a corporal, so let's go ahead and have them, you know, lead this team, or let's have them take care of this, you know, this guard duty thing or whatever, and be in charge of them or whatever. But then sometimes you're just stuck doing regular old specialist stuff, and even though you're not getting paid extra for it, you have more responsibility with it. That does definitely vary. I mean, there's probably some like infantry units, certain combat arms units where corporal does get a little bit more authority, almost more like your sergeants in certain other units. But definitely, you know, it does depend on the unit, depend on the leadership. Now, once you do finally move up this guy to your sergeant. I was going to say that this, I, I, like a four specialist, you got like, so it seems like there's ranks in between ranks somewhat, kind of. I don't know, man. Army ranks always work. Air Force ranks were the hardest for me to ever try to understand. And at a certain point, you know, uh, was it like tech sergeants in the Air Force? Uh, after a while, I just said sergeant. They really didn't care too much. But by the amount of ranks I'm remembering right now, I would have to rewrite it or rewrite the rank structure, what, 100 times? Upper, lowercase, every other letter, every other letter a different color. Fuff. FF games, because YouTube doesn't like that algorithm. Sergeant, now you do actually have a little bit more authority, but you also have, you know, more responsibility. So now you're possibly like a team leader. Maybe even, you know, after you've been a sergeant for a while, you might even be a squad leader. It just kind of depends on your unit at who they have, what they're short on, because there's often cases too where you have a sergeant that's been a sergeant for a while. So they might be a section sergeant. They might be a squad leader, whatever the case is. But now you know you have authority, right? You are probably more of the person that has to tell the soldiers what to do. You're less of the worker bee now. I mean, not always, but less of the worker bee and more of your supervisor kind of a role. And a lot of people, you know, especially when they're new sergeants, they try to kind of play both fields. You're like, oh, I'm not going to be one of those NCOs that just watch, you know, over what's going on or whatever. And they try to get more active with doing things. But after a while, they start to find out that, hey, if I'm really tied up with working on this with the soldiers, I can't keep track of what these other soldiers are having to do over in this other area and now they're just kind of off roaming free. So sometimes you do have to balance that out. Sometimes you have to do a little bit of work, you know, with the soldiers to pull your weight a little bit and kind of, you know, not seem like you're lazy or whatever the case is. And sometimes you do need to, you know, just kind of step up and to be that leadership position and check on soldiers, make sure they're doing the right things. Maybe make sure they're doing things right the right way so we don't have to do it a second or third time. But especially while you're new, right, you're still kind of stuck in that mentality like maybe you were as a specialist where you want to get your hands dirty and get into the work. And that's that's fine, right? That's okay to do, but you can't let it get in the way of also being a leader and also making sure that your other soldiers that you're responsible for are doing the right thing. So now you're like putting charge of some soldiers, like I said. That was a pretty damn good explanation, right? As far as like, hey, 
I understand that you want to work with your guys be in the um, fight dirt with your guys, right? But you also got to understand that you are in a leadership position now, right? You got to be able to move everybody. But a sergeant being a team leader now, I I mean, I personally, I mean, in the, in the Marine Corps, I've never seen a sergeant um, be a team leader. I've always seen them be a, uh, a squad leader at the very minimum. And then if not, they, they can also be like an acting uh, platoon sergeant, right? Until uh, that platoon would get a staff sergeant. But you know, sergeant, backbone of the Marine Corps. Sergeants, man, if you have a if you have a good sergeant that actually cares about you guys and very fair, it's completely unbiased. If you if you can get the job done, if you're a great team leader or can be a great team leader, he'll put you in that position. Things can be so smooth, right? Everything, everybody's on the right page. Hardly any infighting. Sometimes you just get stuck with the squad that has a horrible squad leader, in my opinion, right? And then it just creates a toxic type environment and the squad suffers as a whole maybe you have like three four soldiers maybe more it just kind of depends that's usually kind of a common range you know especially for a new sergeant to maybe have like three or four soldiers that are kind of like a part of their team that you probably now have to do counseling statements for for monthly ones as well as if they do negatively then you have to write that counseling statement for them and you have to you know maybe conduct some training with some soldiers and lead the training and you might be in charge of like some guard duties and different kind of tasks like that also some crappy ones too, sometimes you get stuck being in charge of a crappy detail, you get stuck being in charge of the CQ, you know, being the 24 hour duty at the barracks and being the one in charge of one or two other soldiers that are your runners and making sure the barracks are fine. Now, when you do move up to staff sergeant. All right, three things from just what he says to Sergeant. Um, from the Marine Corps side of things, it did suck because after a while you did have to have a per person of a certain rank to be on duty. Uh, as about the time I was getting out, they had to have a corporal and a lance corporal, no one below because they didn't trust the the junior guys to keep an eye on things, and also for the majority, the seniors weren't going to pay attention to them either way. So they were also at a certain point where like, no, we now we need a sergeant and a corporal to do this. And granted, there's a lot less sergeants and corporals, so now very limited list and duties getting heavily rotated between them. Now the part about the counseling and all that. Uh, I've ha I've had to do counselings, and for the most part, I genuinely tried to do a good way, and not necessarily just like do a, your basic "Hey, read a book, do this, do that" type deal. Because you know some of these things can actually help, right? You know, actually counselling your Marines, or in this case, your soldiers, right? And I had one more thing to say, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. But we're gonna continue forward, Sergeant. It does seem like a little bit of a good increase, right? Now you should not be anywhere as close to the same level as these guys, really. I'm not, not saying like putting them down kind of a thing. I'm, sorry, I'm talking about as far as like, you know, responsibility wise and what you're going to be doing. Now you're probably like a section sergeant, maybe even in some cases, if you've been a staff sergeant for a while and they're short on certain people, you might even be a platoon sergeant. So now you're in charge of more soldiers. Maybe now you're in charge of like 10, 20 soldiers. It kind of just depends on the makeup of your platoon, what unit you're in, your MOS, all that kind of stuff like that. But now you have a lot more responsibility. Now you're more looked up to and you are going to be the go-to NCO for getting a lot of training done. Because the next one up from here, right, they're probably like the platoon sergeant. So you're like the next one in line. Platoon sergeants, which I'll talk about in a little bit, are more of your ones that are kind of looking over the big picture for the platoon and handing down the tasks to these staff sergeants to make sure that the platoon is carrying them out. These, these individuals are the ones making it happen, right? They're the ones that have been told what we have to accomplish, what has to get done, and making sure it gets you know seen through to get accomplished. These are also sometimes your drill sergeants, right? You can have drill sergeants here too, but most commonly, you know, here is where you want the drill sergeants, but in situations where they are shorthanded on drill sergeants or certain people volunteer for it sometimes, then, you know, you can be drill sergeants here, but this is more, more of your common one. Also recruiting as well. So your recruiters are often the staff sergeant, this E6. So then from here, it then moves on to an E7, which is a sergeant first class. Those individuals are typically your uh, platoon sergeants. Your sergeant and now above that actual um, E6 for us or that staff sergeant role, you're going to have a gunny. And a gunny, you're going to have one gunny for the actual whole company for us, right? Anyways. And I don't know what it is, man, but the gunnies, every single gunny that has been in our company um, has always been a hard ASS. I don't know what it is. And it's always a big dude.
Sergeant of first classes are the ones receiving the the information from like the first sergeant for the company or the troop or whatever. And they're the ones that have to make sure that tasks are getting done and gets delegated properly. It kind of definitely goes down like a sequential kind of order, right? Rank kind of kind of starts to go downhill of, you know, who's in, next in line for dishing out the orders and making sure things get done. But your platoon sergeants are the ones that are receiving it directly from like your first sergeant. First sergeant's like, hey, we gotta get this thing done, you know, as far as, you know, where we wanna be as a whole company or a troop or whatever. And the platoon sergeants at their levels are the ones that are attending the meetings to talk about how it's going to get done and kind of get the taskings and, you know, kind of divvy things up. So a lot of responsibility at E7. When you're at that sergeant first class, you're, you're uh, you know, kind of, kind of a big deal and uh, you kind of have to, you know, really step it up, definitely. Sometimes even sergeant first classes have to fill in often as maybe the first sergeant, right? If they are the higher ranking sergeant first class and the first sergeant is gone somewhere or whatever the case is, they may end up being like the acting first sergeant. Now, however, if that company or whatever has a master sergeant, then that one is most likely the individual that will kind of fill in as... I think I've only ever seen one other master sergeant. No, I've seen two master sergeants out of my whole four years in the Marine Corps. Um... Don't know why. I feel like they're more on the administration side of things. Yeah, but I mean, if I remember correctly, this is where you would kind of get the decision if you're trying to go the master sergeant route or if you want to go to the first sergeant route. Because uh, for us, for uh, E8, it would be a first sergeant, and they would be the ones that are going to be um, in charge of the company. I think I said beforehand that the gunny would be um, – not necessarily in charge of the company because you know you, you have the CEO who's going to be the commanding officer. Uh, typically, a captain could be a major. Sometimes um, our 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 CEO was promoted to major on deployment, um, but the first sergeant's going to be working with them. Gunny, from what I understood, like he just took care of a lot of administration stuff for like the actual whole uh, um, company, and he would kind of work with the first sergeant also. I guess not to degrade them or say anything about it, bad about Gunny's but can be somewhat considered of an assistant. I mean, I wasn't really too sure of the roles there, um, just from what I saw, personally. As the uh, acting first sergeant when the first sergeant is gone. Master sergeant is the next rank up, your E8s. But your E8s can also be the first sergeant. But first, let's talk about the master sergeants. Your master sergeant is probably going to be like, I've seen cases where they are in charge of the motor pool, right? They're the individual that is in charge of all of the motor pool, right? So they're in charge of the maintenance people, in charge of anybody else, and they're also overall responsible for the motor pool as a whole. Kind of tasked down from the first sergeant, right? Obviously the first sergeant is the one in charge of everything, but then it gets kind of delegated down to the master sergeant. The master sergeant may be like the motor sergeant or whatever kind of term they may use, and that person is kind of in charge of that. Master sergeants can also be more in like staff roles. I mean, a lot of these roles, I mean, really like this staff sergeant could be in a staff role. The sergeant first class can be in a staff role. But if your master sergeant isn't like usually like in a maintenance section or certain other kind of roles, usually they're working at staff level. So that means they're working at like that brigade or battalion level. Different things like they could be like the training NCO, right? They could be the person that's in charge of making sure that the unit is getting the proper training they're supposed to be getting and scheduling the training through the proper channels to make sure that we have everything planned out for the field exercise or classes coming up or whatever. So they could potentially even be like the training NCO. That could even still be a staff sergeant though or a sergeant first class. But hopefully at some point that master sergeant is hoping to become a first sergeant as that first sergeant is usually in charge of that troop or that company just kind of for what he said about the um doing the training schedule you'd be surprised at how far they actually plan out and are consistently adjust every little thing so that's why whenever they have things that they have to do at a certain time they have to do it at that time otherwise it's going to mess up everything else or that battery depending on you know what type of unit it is they're the senior nco for that unit level so again, kind of going back to how things kind of stair-step down, right? These are the individuals that are probably receiving information as a whole from like the Sergeant Major, right? So they're getting the taskings as far as how the mission needs to be accomplished at each company, troop, battery level, 
and it gets handed down to the first sergeants to kind of relay, hey, this troop or this company or battery is going to be in charge of, you know, getting this part of the mission done. This other one's going to be in charge of this part of the mission and so on and so forth. So they're handing these missions down to them. And then it's up to the first sergeant to then kind of divvy that work up between the platoons to make sure that as a whole, we can accomplish the mission. Someone might be in that first sergeant role usually for maybe like a year, maybe two years, it just depends. Uh, often you don't want to have a first sergeant in charge of that specific, you know, troop, company, or battery for too long because then, I don't know, things kind of get complicated a little bit in some ways. So typically a year, maybe two years, you usually don't have a first sergeant being in charge of that same troop or company or battery for that long, right, before they either move on to another one or they move up in position because that next level up is a Sergeant Major. That Sergeant Major could also probably be like in a staff. All right, so Sergeant Major, kind of the same thing for us. Um, God forbid they ever have a damn safety brief, the whole battalion on a Friday, and they just say, I'm gonna keep this nice and short, uh, gents. And then they talk for an hour and you're standing there in the blazing sun. But in any case, uh, the Sergeant Major that was with us, for the most part, pretty good guy seemed good um he could be a bit of an ass at times from what i hear he threw one of my buddies uh gear around who was trying to watch wash his sip gear in the, the laundry room and he just tossed everything out <laughs> which is pretty damn funny um he's the one, he's gonna be the one that uh works with the uh lieutenant colonel most likely or in this case the battalion commander as far as like really being in charge of like the entire unit three seven right the blade position that one is usually like maybe the sergeant major for the s3 which is like you know the intel individuals or they're in charge of a whole you know major kind of a thing not to be confused with the command sergeant major which we'll talk about that in a little bit but that sergeant major typically that's more of a staff kind of role when you're a sergeant major and not a command sergeant major you're working somewhere as a battalion at brigade maybe at division or whatever in some kind of you know main senior nco role but not at the level where you're a command sergeant major that's in charge of a larger unit sergeant majors that i've seen are like someone that's in charge of like the s3 like i gave that example i've seen a sergeant major where they are in charge of the training but for the training for that entire you know unit right so if they're you know a battalion level maybe right then that is the battalion uh training nco or maybe the battalion schools nco or whatever could be that sergeant major in some cases but usually it's some sort of staff position. There's somewhere working up at brigade or up at battalion or maybe up at division doing something really important. And eventually if they, you know, are selected, then they become a command sergeant major. So now they're in command, I guess you can kind of say. All right, so it seems like this would be our version of the sergeant major, right? And then after this, what was it? Master gunnery sergeant and then sergeant major in the Marine Corps? Of a unit. That is usually done at that brigade level or that battalion level or that division level, post level even, right? Technically actually post is lower than division. So if I, did I say division before that? But division would be actually be one of the higher ones and then garrison command or the garrison sergeant major is like the post sergeant major. But those are your individuals usually that are command sergeant majors. They have a high responsibility over that battalion, that division, whatever the case is. Obviously those individuals probably want to work up to the high responsibility of being a division command sergeant major. Very, you know, important individual, making a lot of important, you know, kind of decisions, working alongside with, you know, whatever that, you know, probably like a general, like if they're at a division level, then they probably have someone that is the division commander, which is probably like a general. That individual may be like, like you know, two star, three star, whatever the case might be. So the different are your different levels of that command sergeant major. It could be a battalion, brigade, division, garrison sergeant major that garrison sergeant majors though is almost more like a mayor right i mean you're, they're working alongside with the garrison commander which might be like a one star or two star or something along those lines uh just depending on the size of the installation and the size of the units and everything like that but they're kind of like the mayor they're not really like in charge of the entire units that are on that installation they are in charge of that post so they do have say so as far as like policies that go into place with that post and all the kind of stuff that go into effect on that installation but they are not in charge of those different units the that comes down to the division sergeant majors the division commanders for those levels and those ones kind of you know work with a higher up from bigger army stuff so garrison sergeant major garrison commander post commander post command sergeant major those individuals are more like your mayors that are kind of in charge of policies and everything with that installation and in charge of that installation but not the units necessarily 
So uh, I think that kind of gives a good summary as far as you know what this guy does and this guy does and this guy does and all that stuff like that. You might want to know like at what level do you start getting more leadership? What Sergeant Major of the Army, obviously, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps. Does this individual do when you get, once you get to that rank? There are probably a ton of other examples, right? I'm just kind of shooting from the hip as far as some of the examples I gave you. There are a ton more examples. Don't think that just because I didn't mention a specific example that that's not something that exists or whatever. No, I, I just didn't mention it. There's a ton of examples that probably could be out there. So there are a lot of different levels as far as responsibilities. This is just to give you a general idea of some potential possibilities, all right? It's not the end all be all example. And if I didn't mention it, then it's not a thing that happens at that rank. No, I'm just giving you some good examples for your curiosity, individuals, especially that want to join the army and you're wondering at what stage, what rank do I start doing this? Or do I start doing that? If you have questions as far as, you know, hey, what rank does this? Or what rank does that? Just leave those down in the comments. Either I'll try to respond to you. I'm sure there's a ton of like other veterans or people that are currently in the military that might be able to respond to you and maybe let you know. Maybe you want to know, you know, what at what level do I, you know, Know, get to you know move off base or whatever the case is right and if if you really want to know that I mean typically it's usually right right around here sometimes in some cases with the units depending on how full the barracks are otherwise you have to move up to the next one at start first class unless you're married of course but again there are a ton of other examples so hopefully you enjoy that and you get a good little kind of understanding as far as an idea of what people do what soldiers do at different ranks at different levels all right so let's go ahead and talk about that for a minute now the biggest thing here is how we said just because it didn't mention anything doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. I mean, there's different, there's always going to be probably endless examples, right? As far as like what each rank does. Um, again, that one E1 to like E4 really <laughs> throws me around uh, for like the Army side of things. Um, mainly just because I was all about Marine Corps and learning that rank, right? And kind of also what happens at each rank could be very dependent on whatever unit you're with, wherever you get stationed at, wherever... Um, even you deploy it sometimes, you know, I mean, you have people, sometimes you just have a shortage of people, right? And you got to grab others to um, be able to fill certain positions. And at some points, it doesn't even matter the rank. Or they'll probably pick the most uh, newest guy to re receive a rank, like, for example, E4, right? So it was kind of really good to kind of see some similarities, but also see, like, quite a few differences, right? As far as, like, seeing that it seemed like there was a lot of in-between ranks or in-between steps to get to the next one which doesn't really seem like a bad idea. It actually seems like a good idea, right? As far as like really seeing who has the chops, right? To be able to get to that next rank. Sometimes people get it, right? In my opinion, probably don't deserve it. Or maybe there's someone else who just wasn't very well liked by their upper chain of command and didn't get that chance. I would say though, as soon as people get to E3 and they come back from their first deployment, it doesn't matter where they come from. It could be Okinawa. It could be from South Korea. It could be from uh, the Middle East and Kuwait where nothing re really happened, at least during my time. And they will, ego-wise, it will completely change when they come back, right? They think they're some kind of superhero and that uh, you got like these little skinny, scrawny dudes trying to pick fights with new guys who are like twice their size and can really mess them up. And yet none of them talk smack to them one-on-one. -on -one. They always wait till there's a group of their peers that quote-unquote have their back. But I would questionably say that they would run at a, the sign of trouble, at least when it came to, like, you know, fight. Uh, in my personal opinion, obviously, you know, everybody has their own. In any case, though, I like the video. I enjoyed uh, learning more about uh, just, like, not only the Army's ranks, because, as, as I said, the ranks kind of always have always thrown me off, just from the other branches as well, even the Navy and the Air Force. And also seeing kind of, like, what to expect if I had gone maybe the Army route, right? Uh, instead of the Marine Corps route, which from what I've heard, my buddies who went from the Marine Corps to the Army say it's way better. You know, things, uh, for the most part, at least in their experience right now, they've been saying that people aren't necessarily D-I-C-K-S. <laughs> and everything's not like a uh, quote-unquote like shoe measuring contest, right? Um, from what they've been telling me, at least. And overall, they just like it better than the Marine Corps. And from the Marine Corps side of things, I can almost guarantee it is because of the leadership not all leadership but a big majority of it and if you try to say anything like a certain someone who just was really on the news lately they'll try to quote unquote drown you but that's all i really got to say for this video don't forget to like subscribe it really does help me a lot hit that dislike button if you didn't like it leave me a little comments and maybe what it was it really does help me improve the channel and i will see you all on the next video bye